Welcome to Lesson 1.2's Math Moment. Today we learned all about factor puzzles and we used what we know about multiplication and the patterns we find in the multiplication table to help us solve our factor puzzles. So in this first puzzle we have 6, 27, 16, and then something missing. Our goal is to figure out what is, goes in this missing square. So how we do that is we first need to think about what these numbers have in common. You can go across and find out what those numbers have in common or you can go down. Either way, whichever one's easier for you. For me, I think I'm going to start with 6 and 16 because they're smaller numbers. I am thinking that 6 and 16 have a 2 in common. So I'm going to put a 2 up top there and a 2 down below. 2 times what gives me 6? 2, 4, 6. 2 times 3 gives me 6. So just like in our multiplication tables, I'm pretending like there's a little times right there, and I'm meeting in the middle. 3 times 2 is 6. Now, the cool thing about a factor puzzle is once you have a number on one side, it gets to shoot right across to the other side. So like we have our 2 that went straight down to here, our 3 gets to go straight across, and we're going to use it later on. Now I have a little times right there, and I think 2 times what is going to give me 16? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. 2 times 8 gives me 16. And again, with factor puzzles, this 8 gets to go right across, and we're going to use it again. So now, I've done all of the work that I can on this side of the puzzle. And I'm going to come over here. I know that all of my corners have little multiplication signs. 3 times something is going to give me that 27. So just like in our multiplication table, think 3 times what gives me 27? I know that it's a 9. That 9 is going to come straight down. Now, to find what goes here, I just have to multiply these two numbers, just like I would in a multiplication table. They go together, 8 times 9, 72. My missing spot is 72. So I'm going to erase this just so it doesn't get confusing there with the numbers and show you the next one. So this time we have a different spot in the puzzle missing, but that shouldn't cause us any trouble. We're just going to apply the same strategies as before. So we've got 35 and 56 that we could start with, or 32 and 56 that we could work with. I'm going to choose to work with 35 and 56 because I know right away that they have a 7 in common. I can think of multiplication facts in my head that these two have that I can multiply by 7. So 7 times what gives me 35? 7 times 5. That 5 can shoot straight up top. We'll use it later on. 7 times what gives me 56? I know that 7 times 8 gives me 56, so I can shoot that straight up top to use it next. Now, I have to think 8 times what gives me 32. So if I think through my facts, I know that 8 times 4 gives me 32. That gets to shoot straight across to help me solve the missing piece, which now I have 5 and I have 4. I'm going to multiply them to get 20 as the missing piece of my factor puzzle. You've got lots of pra um, practice on your homework tonight with factor puzzles, but if you have any other questions, make sure to see your teacher.